Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Ubuntu Web. It's going to be like a little bit of a first look. Uh, not really a review because this is a remix. It's still in beta. And I don't want to be too hard on it. Now, if, uh, if this is two days ago, so I wrote a script for this video. And the script was not kind to Ubuntu Web. It's, um, my first experiences just were not good. But I had a chance to think about it for a few days, and I listened to the Ubuntu podcast, and they really liked the developer behind Ubuntu Web. I'm not sure what it, can't remember what his name was. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't even really matter. And I got, I had a chance to go through some of the comments on the, the discourse where this was announced. And, um, I decided to scrap the script that I originally wrote, but some of my points are still going to be uh, relevant. So we're going to—I'm going to use it a little bit as a, 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 an outline, but this is mostly just going to be kind of a rambly type video. Not that all my videos aren't like rambly. Um, and for those of you who are uh, returning v viewers, if there are any of those, you can tell I've done a little bit of uh, sprucing up. At the beginning here, I've put my face on the opening card here, and um, I've still had to figure out how to put my video in the corner like, you know, normal people do. But anyways, let's just jump into Ubuntu Web. This is what Ubuntu Web looks like out of the box. Um, so first, let's just discuss what Ubuntu Web is. Uh, basically, Ubuntu Web is described as a privacy-focused, open-source alternative to Google's Chrome OS. It uses Firefox instead of Chromium to run web apps in containers. It uses uh, a partnership with a cloud services company called E slash E or the E Foundation or something like that to provide several cloud-based services that are placed right up front. It also promises experimental Android app support, which I didn't get a chance to uh, use or figure out, so uh, I won't be talking about that today. Um, so the idea behind Ubuntu Web is really good. Uh, you have a, a desktop environment that is based on web technologies, uh, like Chrome that is based, you know, on a kernel of Linux that is surrounded by a wrapper of Chrome where pretty much everything on there is Chrome based. That's what Chrome OS is. Um, so th theoretically that's what Ubuntu Web should be only using Firefox, but as you can see, if you look at this, this is this is GNOME. <laughs> this is GNOME. And it's not even good GNOME. But it's fine. It looks fine. It's uh you know reasonably well themed. Um but the main draw here is supposed to be the quote unquote web apps that are containerized uh, Firefox things that allow you to get into certain applications that are mainly on the web so like email now you click on this what do you think it's going to bring up you would think it would bring up oh it probably is not going to bring up gmail i mean that'd be dumb but it'd bring up some kind of online email service that's easily to get to you click on this and you get a firefox with a tab and then you get a login uh password thing for something called ecloud ecloud.global no explanation as well of to as to what that is uh, when I first used this, I was like, what the hell is eCloud? I still don't know what eCloud is. I had to look it up. And you can actually... <laughs> this is actually the first time I've noticed this. This actually does have a link to the eFoundation. So the e basically what the eFoundation is, is an open source uh, mobile phone operating system. Basically, that's what the eFoundation is. Now, that looks exactly like an iPhone. Um, or iOS, I guess. Um, so clone time but you know, whatever i'm not sure what a, a mobile operating system has to do with this but if you click on the you know your email here it opens up email it highlights firefox um and it takes you to this that's all it is now every email is going to require you to sign in that's not a big deal but look at this file this files thing you click on files it brings you to firefox and you have to sign in to do it what what and now i understand that the files they're talking about are something is presumably something like pCloud or Google Drive or something like that. That's great, but a new user is going to think that this is their file browser. 
because that's what's pinned at on the taskbar. That is confusing. Now there is local a focal file thing. This looks like a this looks like um Nautilus. Yeah, this is Nautilus. Okay. Um but it's not pinned down here. This is you know this e foundation files thing of a jig is pinned down here and you can't get into it without signing in again, which again is fine if you are, you know, if you understand what you're getting into. But again, this is what they put front and center in front of your face and that's what you get. Now, there are a couple other things here. This is called DTube. I have no idea what that is. Um, it's, it appears to be some kind of clone of Ubuntu, um, but I've never heard of it before. I mean, I've never heard of it before. Um, like, I don't know if there's anybody on here. Like, see, let's see if there's Distro. Nope. I mean, what the hell is DTube? I've never heard of DTube before. Where did they come up with this? Why, why isn't this library? Why isn't this PeerTube or something? Uh, that would make way more sense than some random, strange, shady website that I've never heard of. Um, and this is supposedly their web store. Um, this was not working yesterday. This was actually down. Um, but I still don't see, you know, literally they have one app in education, one app in music. I mean, you gotta remember, that's fine, because this is just beta software. I'm not criticizing the lack of applications, but these are just... And you would expect these just to be, you know, web extensions or whatever, which is fine. This is what it's meant to be, what it's meant to do. It's just, this is the, honestly, this is the, of the five things here, other than Firefox, this is the only one that actually makes sense to have pinned down here. The other ones are things that you have to sign into. And that's just not a good thing to, to present front and center to users, especially when you're linking to something that is really weird. Nobody knows what the eFoundation is. Nobody's ever really heard of it, especially new users. So if Ubuntu Web is going to be successful, uh, this has got to change. So I kind of got right into the rant. And I didn't want I wanted to be generous to this this distro, but I, I, I'm just, I'm at a loss as to why this exists, if it's going to be just GNOME, okay? So, Chrome OS isn't just Linux with Chromium installed. It's not just a Android with Chromium installed. It's actually, when you log in, you're logging into a version of Chrome that looks like an operating system. That would be cool if this was, what this is, was a Firefox OS kind of thing. But that's not what this is. This is GNOME with all the things that GNOME brings to the table, all the overhead, everything like that, with some really weird pre-installed web applications that come from a service that nobody really knows about and that nobody really uses. Um, and it wouldn't be so bad if there was an explanation. There's not an explanation. At least so far, there's not an explanation. There's just, you know links to these things and these things aren't even really apps like you can tell they're not really apps because when you open them firefox stays highlighted and these don't get highlighted or anything um it's really weird it's just really really weird um so that's really my thought on the way they've implemented this um i have a whole bunch of stuff here here written down so I guess the answer, so the question I asked in my script was, is Ubuntu Web any good? And the answer I came up with is no, Ubuntu Web isn't any good. Um, but I said there's some arguments that could be made that the Ubuntu Web is a beta project and that it's not complete and yada, yada, yada. And I'm more warming to that aspect of this now than I was when I first wrote my script. Um, mainly because of what the Ubuntu podcast guy says, guys said um, in terms of, you know, this actually being a reputable developer and everything. When I first got, got this, I had no clue who it was. You know, I just heard about Ubuntu Web on the internet. And 
I clicked on, you know, one of these icons and it came up to come up with this. I mean, this is, this is insane. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, even Google doesn't make you sign into your files app. I was like, cause I was like, what the hell? Why, why am I signing into files app? All I want to do is browse the files. Why isn't this, you know, on the, the, you know, the, the task bar? It doesn't make any sense. And it is now. <laughs> like, and, that, and that's good, right? And that's, that's the, this is the way it should be. This, your, lo whatever's local should be on here. If you're, if you're going to bother to have local things, uh, which they are because this is GNOME. Um, I'm just not on board with what Ubuntu Web at the moment is trying to do because it doesn't seem to have a purpose. Chrome OS has a purpose in that it's supposed to be a lightweight um, web-based operating system. Yes, it's based on Linux, but the Linux kernel, it's it's based on Linux the same way Android is based on Linux. It has a whole bunch of stuff that's running on top of it to make it what it is. You know, Java and you know, whatever. Um, this is just GNOME with some really weird web apps and there's nothing wrong with gnome it's just we've got that already <laughs> you know why are you wasting your time developing this because we got this already. we we have gnome already uh, it's okay to make a re you know, fine make a remix but don't try to sell it as something that's you know awesome and different this is just gnome with the firefox web browser these aren't specific the the discord the the developer in there on the discourse post made a big deal about how these are uh, containerized wrappers for firefox and no they're not <laughs> no they're not this isn't a containerized version of, of of firefox this is just firefox opening tabs <laughs> that's all this is these this is this is these aren't specific dedicated apps that are like you know electron apps but you know running on a firefox firefox background these are just links to weird things in Firefox tabs. That's what that is. And that's, <laughs> that's really, really weird. And, and it's really, it, it just, it's very, uh, unusual and very mind boggling that a developer who seems to, you know, have other projects, he does the I think he does the Unity remix too, and like that's a that's a legitimate remix. People want Unity, and I think that there are people out there who would love an OS based on Ubuntu that is running a, a brand new you know desktop environment that's based on web technologies, and that'd be cool. But that's not what this is. This is this is. This is Ubuntu with a couple extensions installed so that you can move the the, the dock down here and you know a, a few custom icons and Firefox. That's all this is. This is a complete waste of time. Um, and like I said, it, the argument could be made that it's beta and, and maybe the developer's vision hasn't been you know been realized yet. Um, but I I I would just stop. <laughs> I would just stop because there's nothing here that you need. I mean, the Anbox thing is cool. I haven't had a chance to play with that, so maybe that's the cool thing. But again, you go into the notes thing. Again, you have to sign in, um, and that's not unusual for a notes thing. I'm doing a, a a notes video. I think it come out comes out tomorrow. And most notes apps, you, if you want to sync things or you're using them online, you have to sign in. So that's not unusual. It's just that none of these things that are the things that he's drawing you into uh, can be accessed without signing in. And when FOSS, when, when free and open source software is involved, one of the primary reasons why you would get involved with such software is because of privacy and the fact that you have to sign into every single thing. Uh, you know, photos, notes, files, email, contacts, calendar, tasks, um... I wouldn't be surprised if Anbox, I'm not going to open that up. You, you, you just have to sign into those things, and you can't just use... I mean, understand why. It's just that every single thing you have to do that. If, when you signed up for your... When you created a new user on this, it also created that account for you to get into those things, that'd be good. You know, or I, I, theoretically, I suppose it could be good. 
Um, but there's no local, you don't own any of these things. You don't have a, any control over it. And there's, as of right now, there's no explanation as to who is really behind these things. There's the E-Foundation. But like I said, new users aren't going to know what that is. I had to go look it up. I'd never heard of them before. The only two apps that you can use on here without signing in that aren't local are SoundCloud. And that works just like SoundCloud does. And, of course... Twitter. So, and again, and again, these aren't containerized web apps. These are just links to Firefox. You know, it's not any, any special magic developer sauce that he's put into this uh, to, you know, to make uh, it more secure, more privacy focused. None of that. You know, it, it, like I said, they build this as a privacy focused web distribution. This is just Firefox in a tab. With Twitter in it, it's not anything special. It's not anything you can do on regular Ubuntu. You can you can pin, you know, a, you know, Gmail or whatever to your 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 you know taskbar. You know, with existing Firefox te technologies, you can do it with Chrome. You can do it with Brave. You can do it with Vivaldi. Any of those things, you can just create. There's also, um, I think there's something called like Fluxbox, maybe something like that. So that creates web apps based on Electron. Um, that exists. Um, th this is just what this is, and it's not. It doesn't make any sense as to why it exists. So, <sighs> sigh. I was gonna try to talk about some of the good things, but I, I'm not sure that there are any good things. This is just GNOME, and it's fine, and it's pretty enough. Um, but it's for me, it's completely pointless. Um, as it sits right now, I may look at, at this in a year again if it still exists, and you know, maybe he's made some progress on it. Um, so, basically, I just followed my original script. Because <laughs> my original script was just bitching about all these weird applications and no purpose to this. Um, so, a lot of my criticisms still stand. But the Ubuntu podcast guys seem to really like this. And I'm not sure exactly sure why. I would love to hear them explain. I'd love to see them try this and out of the box and tell us exactly what it is they like about this because I'm not exactly sure. So the, the my biggest biggest question is why does Ubuntu web exist? All all the it just why does it exist? An Ubuntu spin that focuses on apps that are purely web based might be a good idea and I think it probably is a good deal. I, I think that low end hardware like the Pinebook and different ARM based uh hardware you know things, you know Raspberry Pis and stuff like that, those would all benefit from a very lightweight, uh, low-powered Linux kernel with a desktop environment that is purely, basically, Firefox. Good idea. That's not what this is. <laughs> That's not what this is. This is GNOME with a few few extensions on top of it and some wonky links to Firefox tabs. It's nothing else. I just don't think it should exist. I, I mean, I'm all... Linux has a huge problem with fragmentation. There's, I mean, the great thing about Linux is there's also cho choice. The worst thing about Linux is there's too much choice. <laughs> so, and the fact that this exists is just going to confuse people because it's going to be billed as Chrome OS, and people are like, "Be like, oh, Chrome OS is pretty good. I'm going to try this," and then they're going to realize that this is nothing like Chrome OS. I mean, it looks a little bit like Chrome OS. It doesn't even bother, won't even bother people that it's Chrome or that it's GNOME. It's more. <laughs> It, the, it's these things down here at the bottom that are going to bother people, and it's also going to be that I mean, what if what if you want to watch a local video? What if you want to watch a local video? There's no VLC here. There's a, a, a screenshot application and a document scanning application, but there's no VLC or you know MPD or uh, MPV or any of those things. It's very weird. Excuse me, Mastodon Online. Why does it have a Twitch logo? I don't understand. <laughs> um, Mastodon is the, the Twitter clone, right? But why does it have a... Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I get more confused every time I open this up. I'm, I'm just... like It's really weird. Anyways, what does Anbox look like? I'm, I'm just curious. Screw this. I want to see what Anbox looks like. Because Anbox is literally the only thing that makes this any interesting for me at all anymore. I'm all for trying new things. I really do like new things, and, and 
despite my criticisms on too much choice, I think that it's great that a developer can say, hey, you know, I, I want to do some cool things. Um, I want to do something new um, and exciting, but it, it still feels like a waste of time to me. And, and this, this is Android applications that you can view. So that, that basically takes you to, I believe that's a Gmail app. I don't know. Has a and Android settings. I mean, that's cool. I don't know what the purpose of it is, though. And it crashed. I mean, that's beta. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. Anyway, so... <sighs> that's just... It's a, a first look at Ubuntu web. It's more like a first rant about Ubuntu web. Um, if the, you know, developers are precious, right? They're, the great thing about open source is that developers can pretty much work on whatever they want. And um, thank God for that, because without that freedom, we wouldn't have a lot of good open source software that we have now and can enjoy and can take for granted. Um, and maybe in a year, two years, five years, whatever, Ubuntu Web is uh, this amazing thing, and I'll look like a freaking moron for poo-pooing it. Um, it's happened before. Uh, but as it sits right now, for me, what it looks like is just a complete waste of the developer's time. And if it's still something that he's interested in, I'm all for him continuing it because everybody does something that's a waste of time. Um, it can be just a, you know a hobby for him. Fine. Um, I think it confuses, it's going to confuse a lot of people if it ever comes out and becomes an, I just, the way it stands right now, I don't see this ever becoming a, an Ubuntu fit labor, but if it does, it's going to confuse a lot of people. Oops. Um, anyways, so if you liked this nonsense rant, you can give us a thumbs up. If you uh really liked it you can give us a subscribe if not uh don't subscribe <laughs> obviously we'll uh see you next time and uh thank you for watching